Hi, welcome to Code Corner, the newest video segment for Mayfield Renewables. In this series, our subject matter experts will analyze building electrical and fire codes as they relate to PV and solar plus storage systems. In each video, we'll take a brief but comprehensive look at specific code articles, sections, or other requirements from both a solar and an energy storage perspective. Each video will be hosted by myself and Justine Sanchez with other designers and subject matter experts from our team to help give you the insights that we've learned over the years. Both Ryan and myself were involved in the printed version of Code Corner when it appeared in Home Power Magazine, and we'd basically like to bring that same concept to you in a different media form. Our goal for this series is not to really give a high level overview of the entire National Electrical Code, but rather we'd like to dive deeply into some of the most consequential and interesting code requirements uh, to understand the motivations behind them and the applications for them. And with that, let's get the ball rolling with our first topic, NEC 690.1 scope. All right, so let's jump in and we'll, we're gonna talk about uh, the scope of 690.1. And this, we'll be looking at this uh, in the in the uh, eyes of 2020 code. So our, our um, code references are all gonna be 2020. So the scope is here on the screen and this is the, the code language that comes up. And really this is just setting the stage for what 690 is. And so it's, you know, all about the, our PV systems, interactive uh, with or without uh, utility. So standalone systems are covered here as well. Uh, and then there's also, you know, they can have AC, they can have DC uh, utilization. So it's trying to be as broad as possible covering all of PV. Uh, there is that reference to 691 there. And so if you're doing a larger scale system, uh, five megawatts or above, 690, 691, excuse me, applies, and it references back to 690. 691 does re reference back to 690 a fair amount, uh, but that's where you would go if, if you're doing large scale systems. And for this um, video, we want to really focus in on these on this informational note and actually just two parts of this informational note to begin with. And so in 2017, the figures changed in the 690.1 section. So 690.1 uh, section B is where you're going to find these in the very front part of the code. And these are, they may seem like small, you know, they're just changes in pictures maybe, but they they actually have some pretty big implications. And I wanna go through, talk about with you, uh, really just the first two of them uh, so that we can start to set the stage and understand uh, how these will apply and, and how we're going to use them later on in different code sections. So the first one is just an interactive PV system. This is you know our pretty much standard system. This has a PV input going into an interactive inverter, going through some sort of a disconnect and then um, connecting to the utility grid. The connection from the inverter over to the uh, right in this image over to the utility can take a number of different forms. We'll talk about that more later um, in, other, in other sections. But on, on a whole, this is kind of the, the basic um, concept. And really what we're doing here is with the uh, definition or with the inclusion of this PV system disconnect, it really kind of it helps us set that here's the stop point for the PV system and here's the other parts of the system. So very often you're going to have multiple code sections apply. You might have, um, you know, some if you have energy storage, which we'll talk about in great depth later. Uh, but if you have that, then you're going to have some 706 requirements and other requirements, other code sections. 705 comes into play, for example, here. 705 is the utility interconnection. So there's some components there. But what I really like to focus in on with this image, and, and I should say that this is an image that we've recreated from code. So you're going to it, it looks very, very similar in code. We've just dressed it up a little bit and made it, you know, hopefully a little bit more presentable. But the thing that we really are focusing in on, and, and uh, I like to point out here, is the PV system disconnect. And so that PV system disconnect later on in disconnecting means section of 690, there's a lot of uh, rules around it and everything like that. But the the big thing in here is that's where the PV system really is ending. And so if you look back at uh, definitions in article 100, it talks about PV systems 
and a PV system is all of the components required to convert electrical, excuse me, convert solar energy into electrical energy. And so when you look at that PV system disconnect, what I, the way I'd like to think about it is if you're standing at that disconnect and you look back towards the solar array, are all of those components required to convert solar energy to electrical energy? And if you look downstream or look away from the solar at the disconnecting means, are those components required? And so here's a, here's a um, way of looking at it that you can apply and understand. And we'll, we'll talk about this more when we get into energy storage, um, because that's where it really becomes, I think, more complicated. And you're going to have multiple disconnects. You're going to have, you know, where does the PV system stop? Where does the energy storage start? What's the interaction between the two of those? And so it becomes a little more complex uh, than in these, you know, relatively straightforward interactive systems. And the thing I should, I'd like to note here is, you know, we're showing a PV system disconnect in, in the form of a, a knife switch, which many utilities require, may not be a, a um, NEC requirement. So it very well could be that you go straight from the inverter to a breaker inside that main panel, and that serves as your uh, PV system disconnect. That's a very viable option, and, and it's what we see in a lot of smaller systems. So not to say that you have to have this knife switch kind of thing, it just it helps um, pull it away from, the, um, from everything else and, and help set it apart. So that's why we're, we're showing it here. So this was a pretty big change uh, when, you, when you really think about it. And one of the places where this is really gonna come into play, and, and we can talk about this more at some other time, but when we start talking about rapid shutdown and what conductors have to be controlled. And so you, you're gonna be needing to control your PV system conductors. And so having this PV system disconnect and this you know, finite point that says, I am disconnecting my PV system here, everything else is not part of the PV system, really helps add some clarity to that. So we'll talk about that uh, when we talk about um, the rapid shutdown requirements, and, but just setting, helping set that stage uh, is the reason why I wanted to go through this, through this image. The other one that's quote unquote, you know, easy to look at or to consider here uh, is an AC module system. So these are becoming actually quite popular. Uh, you know, a few years ago, we weren't seeing very many. Now we're seeing more and more of these. AC modules are different than a PV module with a microinverter attached to it. They're, it's, an, it's a listed assembly. So it's, it's different, um, but in the sense, it's, it's still an interactive system. All we're doing is we're taking the inverters, putting them up uh, at the module level. So each unit has a AC output. And so really there's a definition, you can go look at that and, and understand that, but um, that is you know, an AC module. But when it comes right down to applying the code and that system disconnect again, it's the same as what we were looking at for an invert, you know, a, a separate inverter system. So really it's the way we're applying it in this way when we start th talking about the PV system disconnect, it's really the same as what, what we were looking at for an inverter system. So that's the first two that we want to talk about. We're going to talk some more uh, about the battery energy storage systems and those diagrams in 690.1. So we'll have a, our next video, we'll talk about that. Um, but you know, if you have questions, we really encourage you to reach out to us. We're really wanting to engage with, with our community on code, code topics. So you can reach us at these different ways. Um, and then of course, you know, we are always willing to talk about you know, other, other uh, design systems that you may have some need some support with those kinds of things. So feel free to reach out and happy to talk.